afternoon. This is Q&A with Dima, Transformation, Art of Reinvention in the Time of the Pandemic. This is very, very special program because I have my oldest, one of my oldest and best friends since 1966, Vasek. Václav Hudček, who is the best the best Czech violinist for just about as long as I know him. <laughs> because we know, we know each other, of course, since 1966, Concertina Prague. Vasek, welcome here. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you, Dimka, for invitation. Thank you for how you introduced me. And hello to all your friends and to all who are watching us, uh, us today. Well, today, I have, say, as, as, a, as a recording later on with let, your yeah. friends, because I understand you have a very nice weather, yes, in, in, in Prague today. Is it, is it warm? Because it's quite yes. chilly here. It? Yes, we have uh, about 20 degrees centigrade, very sunny. After 10 days of very cold, we had snowing, freezing now. And also oh. today is the last uh, day of lockdown that we cannot leave the district where we live. So we are now in our house out of Prague, but we cannot go to Prague because uh, this district is called Prague East. And this is different district. So we can only go if we, if we have something to do, to, to visit uh, a doctor or something like that. But tomorrow is finished. So we can go to Prague to our apartment without uh, permission. Finally, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. This is but very, weather, weather is very, very different. Very, uh, the weather was very beautiful, and so we we were with my wife uh, 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 in the in the forest for walking walking. It it's it's nice, very very fine. We love it. <laughs> and how did you do uh, this? It's because one of the questions, of course, is traditional. You probably never spend as much time at home as in the last year, in the year of the pandemic. What new uh, have you learned about yourself by being so much at home and we're not traveling and what has been positive of this of this <clears throat> life you know dimka because uh, as, I, as as you told already we know each other since 1966 and since 1967 68 i play concerts all over the world or i have played concerts now i am not <laughs> playing too many concerts and uh, in one hand, it is uh, very pleasant to have such a free time. I had time to see uh, my father when he lived. He died in 19, the same year as David Oistrak uh, in, uh, in uh, 1974. He uh, was collecting all programs, posters. And of course, I like uh, taking pictures, photo photography, as you did when you were young. We yep, both took yeah. pictures when you came for the first time here. And I have thousands of negatives and thousands of, of dias and everything and pictures. So I bought a professional scanner for, uh, for photos and for, for negative films and positive films. And I spent um, many, many days uh, uh, restoring these, uh, these photographs and, and digitalizing uh, these photographs and, and negatives. And I, have, I sent you a few, few pieces Wonderful. where you were where you are with me as well. So it was very nice. It was very nice. I could uh, also uh, think about uh, the life which we spend wonderful music life with all problems with, uh, with the system we had here. You remember when you lived in the Soviet Union, it was very relative system. With all these problems, we had a wonderful, wonderful musical life because thousands of concerts, I probably played uh, up, up to 10,000 concerts after this almost 55 years. So uh, if, I see, uh, if I see the young generation nowadays, it's really very difficult uh, here to, to live as a violinist soloist or as a pianist soloist you have to get some uh, other profession like you, you teach or uh, concert master in some orchestra. So in, in days when I started and when you were really good, you, you want some competition and your, the career, career became uh, 
I wouldn't say easy because uh, it's never easy, but you have the chance, at least, at least you have the chance that you could be a, a, a soloist and you, you could only practice and play concerts, not to, to sit uh, this in, the, in school or in the orchestra. So I, I said, thank you, God. I had such a beautiful life with the music. I met such a beautiful people. Uh, uh, really very few people which I don't like to remember at all, very few, but a lot of wonderful people like you, Dimka. It's a really my longest, longest time, almost all my friend. You are my all, almost all, uh, since you were 12 years old. It's fantastic. And when I saw... You. <laughs> and when I saw all these pictures, we played together and you are 12 and I'm 14, you know. Oh, it was nice, really. So, uh, uh, of course, I am missing the audience, uh, but we, we up and time, we, uh, we make some recordings and then we stream it on, on internet. So the orchestras also, they want to, to do something for, uh, for the musicians so they don't sit at home. They get the salary. Of course, the people who, who are employed, they got their salary. But the, the musicians here, they always called uh, uh, concerts like Geschäft, you know, not concert, but we have Geschäft. Yeah? And now they always say, oh, I'm looking forward. We will have concert concert and they are so happy and it's really wonderful when we meet without the audience but only musicians with the orchestra and we play for the camera so we are so happy we can make music again and you remember when you were here for uh, uh, for the Dvořák festival and the competition we were so happy that we were in, in the Dvořák hall sitting, listening, and then we gave the prizes to, to, and we were on the stage without playing, but we were, that it was very, very nice after the first wave of, of coronavirus. So, so yeah, like, yeah, very much. I remember that, you know, the because we were sitting together, we were, you know, a part of the jury, we were in the back of the beautiful uh, Rudolfinum, of course, the Borgia call. And, and, and you, me, were, you were president and I was your deputy. Vice president. <laughs> 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 that was funny, yeah. yeah. It was such a, such a long time, 54 years at that point from 66. Unbelievable, man. yeah. Yeah, but there was, there was a, a similarity in the way I also, first of all, for me, it was such a, a thrill to hear live orchestra after six months not hearing it. Because my wow. last concert before was yeah. 10th, 11th of March. And this was uh, middle of September. I did not hear live orchestral sound. And when they yeah. started, and then there was also a chorus and everything. I just never enjoyed orchestra sound as much because I had goosebumps yeah. and you know exactly. it's just after you you miss it and I, I I'm now waiting in three weeks I will have 77 uh member orchestra playing Prokofiev Cinderella you know sweet in, uh, in America I can't yeah. wait it will be yeah. a real special I mean all the all the hairs will be up you know it's it's just a, an adrenaline rush and all of that but tell yeah. me when we met in 66, of course, I know your life more or less after that. But what happened before? What was your beginning? Uh, how did you become violinist and your background and first teachers? And yeah. so on? We lived in uh, Blatna. This is a city uh, south from Prague, about 100, uh, 100 kilometers uh, south uh, of Prague. And uh, but I'm not born there. I'm born in a small city, but it's everything is small here. Rozmital pod Tremšinem is called the, the city I, I was born. But I was just born like you in Baku, and within 14 days we moved to uh, to this city Blatna. My father was a veterinary surgeon, uh, he, but he played uh, as an amateur violin quite well. He was quite good violinist. No, of course, not like your father. <laughs> of course, <laughs> 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 something, something, <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, but he was he was he was a very good amateur violinist, and I was very naughty boy when I was five years old. I liked the matches, you know, to make fire every day because maybe it, it was my genes after my grandfather who was a fireman, fireman chief in this this area. But he was he was uh, uh, so when the fire came, he was as a fireman uh, solving the problem <laughs> with fire. But I was making fire, you know, and yeah. really I was so naughty. That my father, my father said, if you like, if you like uh, this matches wooden things, I will get for you some some uh, wood which will which can help you much more for your education. And the wood was wooden thing was the violin, you know. Mm -hmm. And my uh, my father's opinion was that every person should know to read music, uh, the score notes uh, and uh, every person should play some instrument so that you can touch the music not only listen but also touch piano or everything and uh, he was my first teacher but he uh, recognized very soon that uh, I am talented and that even I was very lazy boy I was not practicing but he told me something and, and I did it immediately so he was looking for a teacher for me so my first teacher was the, or, uh, the director of uh, music school in the city, Platna, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Zahradnik. It, it's, uh, in Czech, it means gardener. Uh, his surname, Zahradnik, is uh, uh, gardener. But he was an or organ player. He, he didn't play violin, but he was my first professional teacher. But uh, soon, and that, that I never told you, with whom I studied, who was my really violin teacher, first one. And that was uh, Valit Talichova. She was the wife of brother of Václav Talich, great Czech uh, conductor, and grandmother of Jan Talich and Jan Talich, the quartet father, oh, yeah. and you know, you know, Honza, Jan Talich, uh, uh, my, my friend, uh, who is now conductor and wonderful violinist too. So his grandmother was my first teacher and she lived in Pilsen, Pilsen, Pilsen. this is Pilsen. the city which gave name to, to the beer, Pilsner, to the well, Pilsen beer, beer, Pilsner of course. beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was also about 70 kilometers from Blatna, from the city we lived, and one year, one year I went to, to, to this, uh, this lady, wonderful lady, and then I went to, to uh, Prague uh, to Dr. Mitska, who was my teacher. But because I was a young boy and he was professor in conservatory, you know, and I, I was so really so lazy and naughty. I said this to my father, uh, he will never be a violinist. He's so lazy and he's so naughty. Really? So he gave up <laughs> teaching. And then I went to Strakonice, it's also very close from the city of Blata. And uh, there, was a, there, was, uh, there was some competition. And my father gave up already, said, I, let's let him, don't, don't bother him with the yeah. violin. And so, but my mother said, okay, so I will take him to this competition, to Strakonice, and we will see. So I went there. I won this competition, children competition, and there was a there was a professor teacher at this music school in Strakonice, Bohumil Kotmel, who said, "I never saw such a talent in my life," and said, "Please, Miss Miss Hurecek, can I teach him? I will teach him free of charge, but I want to teach him." And it was my like he was a little crazy Kotmel. He he was very very strength. Uh, 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 passionate man. Passionate. Yeah, 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 you had to practice, you know, 100 hours a day, you know, really. But uh, thanks to him, I, I, st I stayed by violin. And uh, when I, I spent three years with him, Boris, and then when I was 12 years old, we moved to Prague. And I went back to Professor Mitzka uh, to to conservatoire, but, but uh, I was like z zero class, you know, three years because uh, uh, first class I could visit 
uh, at age of uh, 15. So I only went to uh, study violin and piano, piano to, to Prague Conservatoire when we were in Prague. And then, then it, it then the, my career <laughs> went started. very fast. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, so it was <laughs> Cochettino. So we are back in Cochettino. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. When we met, and thanks to uh, thanks to Cochettino Praga, I was uh, selected among uh, young uh, pioneers. We were here pioneers. It was like Soviet Union. It was. It was like like Boy Scout, but in in communist time they changed the name and of course uh, 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 the program of this movement, youth movement, was also a little little politic. But uh, actually, it was a movement where the the, the children make sports, culture, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I was uh, after I got only second prize in Concertino because you you were the, the first. You are better. Uh, just for one but, year, because the, the next year you won. Anyway. Next year I was first too, yeah. because you were not there, you know, so that was a problem. <laughs> but anyway, I was I was choose, chosen by, uh, by this uh, committee who organized, uh, uh, it, it was called International Camp of Peace of Youth, and it took place in Great Britain, in Ogmore by Sea, in South Wales. So I went there with children, with children from Czechoslovakia. We were a big country, Czechoslovakia in those days. And there were singers. I was playing violin. There were there were dancers, and we went to Ogmore by Sea for this uh, for this camp. And uh, we made, we played program. We played. Uh, we made a pro musical program with everybody who could do something. And we we were traveling in South Wales and playing concert. And the chief of of this camp in in uh, in Ogmore, I see, Mr. Edward Jenkins. He uh, recommended me to to the producer of BBC Cardiff, Mr. Moelfen Harris, who uh, who recorded uh, with me about two two hours program, everything I could play he recorded for me, and next day they broadcasted it in uh, in those days very popular radio program Good Morning Wales. Everybody in Great Britain was listening to, to this program, as I was told. And yeah. it, it was heard by members of Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. They were on the tour through Great Britain. And they said, oh, that some boy from Czechoslovakia, Soviet Union, or Russia. Or so. so they called to Victor Hochhauser Agency in oh. London, because Victor worked with Oistra, a lot of great, yeah, a lot great of Soviet, Soviet artists. And so I got the invitation to play in London with the Royal Philharmonic. And it was 1967 in uh, November, November 12th, 1967. So I went to London. I And before, before this concert in London, I never played with orchestra. I was 15 years old. I never did. No, not because. So there was the only. My father was looking, uh, looking for some orchestra who will, who will let me play at least one Life. concert, at least rehearsal. Because, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was the Moravian Moravian Philharmonic in Olomouc. Uh, the, the, uh, the in those days, uh, the co uh, chief conductor Jaromir Nohail, uh, who. Arranged the concert three times. I played for for schools, extra for schools yeah, like edu education. Yeah. So, and I came to London, and I was uh, I was uh, educated. I was sovereign, absolute sovereign. And what was <laughs> also very nice that the conductor Stanley Black. Uh, uh, who was a pop conductor, very popular in those days. And that was also his debut in classical music. And he was such a nice man. Yeah. Which concerto did you play? Vorzer? I it played Vorzer? Paganini. Paganini di Major. Paganini number one. Paganini, Paganini di Major, yeah. 
And of course, it was a big success. And my ca my career started. They took pictures. It, the, my pictures uh, uh, were all over the world. And of course, it was the year 1967 where the political situation was quite different. What was later or before, you know, there was very uh, the 60s were uh, really, really very, uh, especially for our for our country, very good because it was the Nikita Khrushchev who who liberated a little bit the Soviet, you know, but especially the satellite countries, and he was friend with our president in those days and General Secretary Antonin Novotny, so that the country was really. In the 60s, the Czechoslovakia was a really free country. We could travel, not like today, of course, but we could travel to Western yeah. country. And the, the, of course, the newspapers all over the world wrote it about Czechoslovakia. Then came the 1968, you know, and then very sadly in August 68, uh, the uh, brothers from all Eastern countries came to 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 save uh, save the system and and this was it so was but, a, uh, but and it, it affected you because you met also somebody very important in your life in London at that yes. time because uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was after your concert after your debut so talk about that after that was uh, of course because uh, uh, because. Uh, 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 I, I had a friend uh, in, in, living in London, and that was uh, Josef and uh, Eva Bernat. Eva Bernat, uh, Bernatova in Czech. Uh, she was a very good pianist, and uh, Joška Bernat was uh, uh, dealing with, uh, with arts and, uh, and uh, recordings and books, you know, exporting uh, from Czechoslovakia to, to, to England. And they were friends of David Oystra. And of course, because my first concert, and not only this one was organized by Victor and Lillian Hochhauser, which was a wonderful lady. Very yeah. well. And Victor was born in Košice, in Slovakia, in Czechoslovakia. And he could speak Slovak a little bit, you know. So it was like one family, you know. It was really best times I had to, and best agency I had ever was a Victor Hochhauser of London. And they were friends with David Oysra, of course, with all, all Soviet, uh, Soviet artists, you know, a very close friend. And so they decided, because I, my concert was on 12th of uh, uh, November, and David came, came in the next day to, to London. With, uh, with, uh, with Tamara Ivanovna wife and Igor Natash, with Natasha, they all were, were in Prince of Wales Hotel. I don't know if this, this, uh, this in Kensington, if it, it, exists. Yeah, yeah. it still exists, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. and I came to his room, to, to his hotel apartment, and played all, all, uh, all, all concerto of Paganini for him without a company. And after I finished, David says, Maladjets. And Maladjets. I didn't know what this word means because Maladjets, it's, uh, it, it's uh, now I know what it means. Uh, but I thought it's Mladi, it's like Maladoy. Uh, so yeah. I thought that he said that I'm young. Yeah. Uh, young. Uh, young. Yeah. I didn't know that Maladjets means something very, very well positive. Done. Yeah, very <laughs> so, good. And he said uh, that he would be happy if I could come uh, up in time to, to Moscow, that he would be happy that he could teach me. But it wow. was uh, 1967, uh, end of year 1967, and he said wow. he will let me know when he will be in Moscow and I will come to, 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 to study with him. So I got a letter. I still have all these, of course, all these letters, which I also found when I checked the, the, no, the, the archive of my father made for me. And he invited me in September 1968. And imagine uh, 21st of August came the armies from Warsaw Pact 
to Prague and I I was supposed to go September to, to David. But he was so nice man, so smart. He sent me a letter that he's very busy now and that he will let me know when will be the next day because he knew if I go to Moscow, I will be shot down, shot down when I come back because it was impossible. <laughs> it was impossible. And unfortunately, it... Uh, it took. It was such a bad, uh, bad uh, decision by Mr. Brezhnev to to do this stupid thing, you know, because yeah. uh, uh, I really uh, we always loved uh, Russia, Soviet Union, especially. I met so many nice people there, you know, and they were all all nationalities because uh, Soviet Union is so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Everybody was from other countries. Speak speaking another language, you know, and, and but it's different than in United States, you know, it's, because there are these nations, Armenian, Georgian, etc., etc., And it was really the most beautiful part of, of my musical life to, to visit this country for four years until David uh, died and uh, to, to meet such a wonderful people. So you you studied with him from 70 till 74, because I remember yeah, very yeah. well yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When, when he died, because his very, uh, his uh, penultimate concert, so the concert be before the last, he was conducting Brahms Concerto uh, with my mom. Amsterdam. Amsterdam, exactly. Yeah. And in the yeah, Park yeah. Hotel. And then yeah, she yeah. left because there was still another concert. And then he did one more concert. and. Then he died suddenly from heart attack. And then my mother played the concert in Moscow just the following week. Uh, played yeah, Tchaikovsky yeah. Trio and Chausson Concerto, which they were supposed to play together. They played many times that piece. And so my mother was in Tchaikovsky Trio with Oleg Krisa, yeah. who was a student, uh, and oh. with Liana, and Liana Isakadze yeah. in Chausson in yeah. place of, of, of David also, of course, David. Also. Tell me, I, I only played for him every summer that I would go to, because I was studying with Yankilevich, there was yeah. not much, you know, <laughs> but, but, but David Oyster always li liked to, uh, uh, to hear me in the summer when he would meet me in Riga, not Riga, but Yurmala, you know, the season of Moscow Philharmonic. I always came with my uncle. And so I would come to his concerts and he saw me sort of growing up and he always wanted me to play for him. So I did, if David Oyster asked, and then he would listen and make nice comments. And then Yankelevich always found out, somebody always told him. <laughs> and he would always say, said, I heard that you put, you played for Oyster. I said, yes. I said, why did you play? Are you leaving me uh, for his class? I said, no, no, at all, I adore. But why did you play? I said, well, you know, if David Oyster asks you to play, you don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it is because you you were so good student of him. He was afraid that you will that you will go to David. But well, other, there, was, there was always you know there was yeah, always but this. Other yeah. other students for, from Yankelevich, always when I when I had my lesson in in uh, in Moscow Conservatoire because I mostly. I went to to his apartment in Mo in Moscow, but always uh, students from Yankelevich were sitting there. And David, when he, when he told to his students who were uh, ordinary uh, students of the conservatoire, not like me, that I only came to Moscow when David was there, he said, "Always, if I am not here, go to Yankelevich. He is the best, and you can you can see how he is teaching." You know, so okay. they were they were. Uh, like this, but not really. But you there know. was mutual respect. There was mutual respect, absolutely. Yeah. And Yankilevich's class, as you remember, I don't know whether you saw, you ever went there, was always full of people. There were at least yeah. 30 people uh, exactly. listening, just listening. And I remember because as you just come to that second floor, there was uh, Oystrux class, number six or number eight. Was it number six? I think. Anyway, you're right by the you you turn right from the elevator and there was oyster clouds. Yeah, yeah. Now, and, and that was, was it was the, the same. It, 
the yeah, same in David's, yeah. David's class also full. It was for me, it was a, a, a surprise because in Prague Conservatoire or Music Academy, never was somebody else except the, the pianist, the, the teacher, and the student. And I love that, you know, because there and such a later, such a big names were sitting there like students, you know. So I was, but uh, really it was, it was beautiful. David was teaching, always playing with us, you know, and it was nice to, to, to see him for one meter distance, uh, how we were. And I, I was uh, four, four or five times in Zurich uh, taking, uh, uh, taking lessons from Nathan Milstein at his master class. And oh, it was, and they were, they were students from one teacher, you know, with, with David, you know, uh, from Stoliarski, oh, from Odessa, Stoliarski. Before, and because it, then Milstein then later went to our for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but he was really taught by Stoliarski, and I remember the, the documentary which he made with Pinker Zuckerman, and they always talked when he arrived from Odessa, uh, uh, our would call him Chernomorskaya Technika, the black city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and it's amazing to think, but Chernomorskaya, black black city technique. <laughs> black city, yeah. uh, and it was uh, it was uh, a very uh, very similar. Uh, uh, teaching you, know, Nathan. You know, also all the time with the violin playing, playing with yeah. us. You know. And, uh, uh, but you know what, this, this, that David uh, and Nathan as well, but they, David, he only uh, watched you, you started to play and somehow like Bluetooth, you know, uh, uh, it, it jumped his idea and he said, yes, I know. And you played it, played it. And he said, now it's okay. But he always what was uh, what was fantastic that David, uh, if you didn't know how, what how to do something, you know, he said, okay, you can yeah. do it like that or like that. But he was he was very happy when you brought your own idea, your own interpretation, feelings, and then he said, oh, it's wonderful how you play. I can can I do it also as you do it because he said that the bad teacher who doesn't learn anything from his student that is a bad, bad teacher he was very gross cedic i don't That's know it very is. open very so open. open and, and i think um, and i think the last thing he wanted he, he didn't want his student to sound like him like an imitation of him he 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 appreciated the ones with a real strong personality but, yeah you know, like Gideon Kramer, like uh, Alek Kagan, Leon yeah. Sakadze, they were all different. They were all different because Yankilevich was more of a disciplinary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. and I remember at the age of nine, I came to hear, I had to play uh, Prelude in Allegro, Pugliani, yeah. uh, Chrysler. You know? And then there is a, on the passage there, because I didn't study with Lezara, I just came to him and he said, oh, interesting fingerings where did you get it i said i was a little bit uh, afraid but i still i said yuri savage i made them up I said really i said yeah the, the, these are my own I said pretty good pretty good now change them and play mine <laughs> yeah and, and that was a big difference from david that was a big said, difference oh it's wonderful he tried you know Oh, it's exactly. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> but because Yankilevich did not play. So yeah, he yeah, had yeah. That, dogma. dogma that, a little that bit was exactly dogma. my teacher in conservatoire, Dr. Mitska, yes. as I, I named him already. He was also the teacher from the table. But oh. Professor Sigil at Music Academy, uh, who was my, my last Czech teacher, uh, he played himself in Zvlach Quartet, also solo. So he was much more flexible. But I must tell like, you, I must tell you, Dimka, one thing about David Oyster, yeah. because he knew Oyster, he yeah. knew we are we are friends. Yeah, uh, he, he knew. I, I always say, what are you doing tomorrow? I say, I go with Dimka somewhere, Sitkavetsky. Yeah, yeah. And he told me once, he told me, you know, Václav, if Julian, father of Dimka, would not die. Me and Leonid Kogan will not exist because it was the greatest violinist ever. And then you gave me his Khachaturian Violin Concerto CD. Life, 
And because I played this concerto as well, and when I heard how he plays, I said, never again. <laughs> <laughs> Never again, Cacciatore, <laughs> really good job. Yeah, that, that was life, life, life. There is an interesting story to it. My mother told me, of course, I was in her belly at that point. It was in September 54, beginning of September. I was born at the end of September. But he was in Romania playing with the Azeri conductor Niazi. And, oh, no, maybe with Cacciatore himself uh, in Romania. And... He he played the last moment, the tempo and the every note was uh, every, every, yeah. I it's mean, it was incredible, just, yeah. yeah, incredible. And my mother, when she heard the rec uh, re recording later on, she said, "Why did you play? You played it so fast." I said, "Yes, I was really in a hurry. I was anxious to come to Baku, not to miss the birth." Of my son, <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. But you know, I, I met I met Aram Khachitra last time in the hospital. Hospital when he was uh, he was there when uh, David David Oistrak survived the last heart attack, which he survived, and I came to visit him to uh, to to the hospital. To Mos I flew to Moscow and visited him in hospital. And uh, Khachaturan was operated and he came to, to see. So it was, I saw him and he asked me, Basar, do you play my violin concerto? I say, not, not yet, not yet, <laughs> I will. <laughs> and then you gave me this CD. <laughs> yes. And then... I said, oh, it's impossible. How can I play? And I thought, it's normal to play it like that, you know, the tempo. Well, but it's impossible to, to play it like your father. It's really <laughs> It's really quite the uh, speaking of my father and another giant, uh, Leonid Kogan, who of course you saw in Moscow Conservatory. You you came up with this wonderful project with Supraphon, uh, yeah. which was called the Giants of Violin. Tell me about that project because I, I you invited me to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. It was it was after the revolution already in 1989, which changed the yeah. regime. In and uh, exactly. you know, of course, I I adore those three violinists. You know, this is really without that you are one son of of one of the greatest ever violinists in the world, but uh, the style of their playing, there are three giants and everyone is different. You can, li you listen, you know, how it's David mm -hmm. Fyodorovich. Five seconds. Yeah. Five seconds, and this is Kogan, and this is Julian Sitkowski. All three present. Nowadays, I must say, they are great violinists, but I don't know who are they, if he's from <laughs> Japan, so. Korea, or, you know, wonderful, really, they are 15 years old and they play fantastic. But these personalities like they were, and of course there were another, Isaac Stern and Henrik Schering, etc., etc., uh, in, in and a Christ Western Christ world. Heifetz. But he was from, Heifetz was from the same, uh, from yeah. the <laughs> same <laughs> nest. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, these three Unfortunately, I never met your father, but I know you. You are my friend. Of course, I met David and Leonid and uh, and his uh, his son, Pavlik, also our right. friend, mutual, and the old family. Uh, uh, and I said, uh, because after the revolution, uh, in my country, we were more orienting the, to, to the Western Europe and America. And I, I said, please don't forget these those fantastic uh, Soviet musicians who were so who loved our country so much who were so happy if they could come to play in Prague and so I said we will make a tribute to them and make this CD with all these three and then we got the idea that I have friends their sons are my friends Imka Sitkoczki, oh, Igor Oistrak, Pavlik Koga. And so we made these three CDs as a tribute to this great uh, uh, Russian violinist. And we made uh, wow. Quattro Stagione with Pavlik Kogan. Then we made the Bach Concertos with you. 
and then Haydn also with Mama and and, and but for this tri trilogy was uh, was this Bach, Bach and then Mozart with Oistrak. and Mozart with Igor Oistrak and uh, I think it is very nice because these records are so beautiful and the, we did made it in in the years when still the CD was. Uh, a good because the people were, were buying now everybody can get everything anything Everything from internet free Everything. of charge and uh, we sold uh, thousands thousands of uh, of uh, this this uh, became there, one of the biggest best sellers i think of super until now uh, this best best seller uh, in best last seller. 30 years uh, in classical right. music so it was I, I was happy that that we we still had the time to make these recordings you know because nowadays it would be much more complicated because with the companies the companies doesn't exist almost in with the, yeah, with the yeah. gramophone business uh, it's really very the technical facilities actually are killing uh, this uh, this uh, industry They, because But, because it's so it's so available you know people don't listen to cds uh, anymore they just listen on youtube where, where youtube, where and you, YouTube yeah. because everything is there or they have they pay maybe like i i pay actually to spotify or idagio yeah. i think there's good 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 sites because they're they're fantastic collection especially i dajo for for some rare recording sometimes yeah. live live recording i love that I, i i i believe that if you have something of quality i always like to pay for for quality. of course of but course. now you know now of course in the times of of free things you know people are not always paying speaking of there is a, there was a question like this uh what is, what do you think is the best way for the young performers to be heard and noticed today? Is it still competitions like you and I did uh, or auditions now? Or maybe now more online material is important like the website, the YouTube, you know, social media and everything. What's your view? You, you and I are yeah. the old timers, but you are involved because you you're very much involved with young Uh, 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 with young violinists and you've been great support and promoter of young but what would you suggest when somebody asks you how how can i be heard you know whether it's in czech republic or anywhere else you know if you uh, if you want to make career as a classical violinist playing brahms tchaikovsky It's really very, very difficult nowadays. So some, unfortunately, there are few violinists who are not as good as uh, we will say that, that, uh, that they are really good. So they, they make such a show business uh, appearances, you know. I, want, I don't want to name <laughs> them, <laughs> no, not necessary. Uh, and uh, it is for, for some youngsters, it is very... Uh, it's like drug, you know. They they see how oh, we we have also such an exotic violinist here, you know, and uh, who who do this this kind of presentation, and of course they are on the TV and uh, and they they make money, you know. But I am very happy that my students who go, come to to my master class that they don't want to go this way and want to go like I did, like you did. Of course, we lived in, in the times when if you want a good competition like you won the, the Chrysler in Vienna, you know, I was lucky that I was invited immediately to Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So I, after Concertio, I didn't yeah. need to, to, to go to other competition. So uh, then if you were working hard, then you had really chance to, to make a career and to only play violin not, not to teach and to play in the orchestra and uh, and uh, so the time was uh, quite different and also there were a lot more possibilities to play concerts more orchestras if you only if you see east germany in the gdr 
uh, every almost the village has symphony orchestra. It was fantastic. I went to East Germany and in one month I had 25 concerts, every concert with other orchestra. You know, now you go to Japan for one or two concerts, you know, it's crazy. In Japan, we went for 20, 30 concerts, you know, America as well, you know. And now, of course, it's uh, uh, the planet is smaller and smaller because of the, the uh, of, of course, I speak before COVID time, uh, uh, cheap air tickets, you know, so, and for the youngsters, it's problem, they won one competition, two competitions, three competitions, but there are so many competitions nowadays, and uh, every two, three years, the competition repeats, uh, new, new winners come, and other winners, so uh, the winner of competition has two, three years to play a uh, uh, few concerts, and then new winners come and the the the, the it's devalued, devalued. Yeah. And yeah. if you it's have no, good. if you are not lucky that you meet your David Oistrakh or your uh, Scholte like Andras Schiff, my friend pianist, who who helps you from uh, to. Get to start, yeah, to start, yeah, yeah. then uh, yeah. it's really, really a miracle if someone really makes career, uh, career uh, in uh, today's world, really. And I am trying to help them. At least uh, the uh, the problem for them is to buy to buy a violin, masterpiece violin, even new modern violin, but of course not not very expensive. or Del Gesù, you cannot. Buy. If I have the money for Del Gesù, then I don't need to play violin at all nowadays. But it wasn't in our time. It was still possible. I bought my my uh, precious uh, violin. Uh, uh, very cheap in of course in those days it was also a lot of money but uh, nowadays you could, it's, you could, it's you earn you could earn I, I, yeah exactly yeah. Could, but nowadays it's possible so we, we have in our master class in uh, in this uh, uh, little spa in Luhachovice in Moravia uh, yeah. the best uh, participant gets uh, as a prize gets a master piece violin made by Czech my violin maker. And for these young people, they are 15, 16, 17 years old, it's a big present, you know, because they usually have borrowed violin, you know, or very bad violin. So that is the first step. They get the violin and then I take them on my concert. They, I give them chance, I have recital, one piece or two pieces plays this, this child. Or with orchestra, we play at least double concerto, or he plays something with the orchestra uh, solo. So, but I am, you know, I, also we have some, uh, some uh, small festivals in Prague uh, where we present young musicians and also in, uh, in the cities around. But of course, this is uh, very little I can, I can help. I am not uh, uh, the chief of, uh, of big orchestra or big festival. Yeah. I understand. But, but we are trying. We, we yeah, are trying. I think I think you've done you've done a re remarkably uh, a remarkable amount of what you can do because now Czech Republic is not a it's an important culture, very important and very. Uh, it, you have fantastic history, you know of Smetana, yeah. uh, Smetana, uh, uh, Dvorak, uh, you know Suk. The composers, Janáček, yeah. you, you are fantastic, yeah. and also violinists. There was there was Jan Kubelik, and there was uh, Vasha Pšichoda, and there was Josef Suk, and there was you. And so and there now, was Josef Slavik was. It was uh, in Josef time of Paganini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They was also great. Yes, yeah, and of course yeah. we have we have also baroque music and classical music. This Man Mannheim yeah. school, and it was made yeah. of Czech composers actually. So the tradition is good. So now yeah, we have, uh, but now now we have uh, we have good followers in the violin school, and I'm very happy that the best ones were were also my, my summer students from from my master class in Luhačovice, 
And this is Josef yeah. Spacek, who is a finalist of Queen Elizabeth. He's very good, very yeah. nice boy and very good. And he, but he's one of them. He worked nine years as the first concertmaster of Czech Philharmonic. He was nine oh, years yeah. sitting in a, in the orchestra, and he now he finished. Uh, he finished because he tries. Uh, to to make only solo career, but the, the COVID problem came and it's tra tragic. It's really tragic. And second, Jan Mraček, who won uh, also Chrysler, like you, Chrysler competition, but he's also now, after Josef Špaček, he took his chair in Czech Philharmonie. He's fantastic violinist, you know. But, you know, they they have mortgages for... for uh, of course. They have to pay, yeah, yeah. Leading for, for and yeah, life and in is... Prague is not cheap. The life mm -hmm. in Prague is not cheap. No, no, no. And I understand, but you know, it's interesting because also from the conductors, you know, uh, of course, Rafael Kubelik was real, you know, related to the uh, young Kubelik. Karel Ancherl. Yes. Did you ever play with Karel Ancherl? No, unfortunately, have... because I started actually in 1968. And after we had a plan to, to play together. But after August 68, uh, Karel Ancherl emigrated no, to, to Canada. Canada. To Canada because he, he is a Holocaust survivor. His well, first he was, family died. He was in Terezinstadt. Yeah, yeah. And his uh, his first family all died, all and died he, in 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 the houses. Nazi camp. Houses. Yeah, and he survived. And you know what is uh, uh, what is uh, a very nice story. A friend of a friend of ours. Uh, uh, by the way, her, her son is sponsoring. He's a great sponsor. Of, of our uh, music festival in Prague. We have this concert for, for our youth. And her, her father, of his mother, uh, her father was also in Theresienstadt and because he, he was a music lover. And always when, uh, when uh, uh, Karel Anscher was supposed to go to, to Auschwitz, to where he will be, he, all, he was an, an surgeon in, uh, in uh, in this uh, Theresienstadt, and he wrote it him that he has typhus, typhus that he is uh, chief, and and so he so he had to, he had to stay uh, in Theresienstadt, and so he survived because of of uh, so father of life. our friend, you know. So and uh, but he was fantastic conductor. I think. He was the best. He was after Václav Tali, who who was uh, who was of course a symbol of Czech Philharmonic Orchestra uh, before before the World, World War Two, and after after the Karel Ancher was uh, was really great, and still his recordings are are absolutely fantastic and very nice man. And he died in Toronto. In he Toronto, went, he was in Toronto. and he was he 65. Yeah, he was already uh, quite old, but he was wonderful. There is an interesting recording of Glenn Gould playing Beethoven V, Emperor, with Carol Ancho conducting. Yeah. He was supposed to be another pianist. Glenn Gould already stopped playing in public. Yeah. But it was in Toronto. He, was the, he didn't have to travel or anything, and his manager told me the story. Walter Homburg, the late manager of Glenn Gould, he said he, he just had a call from Toronto Symphony that their soul is, is indisposed, could not play. Maybe on the on a off chance, Glenn Gould decides. And just in a, in a couple of hours, he, he went with no rehearsal and with Carol uh, Ancho. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a very memorable recording. He was a fantastic... My, my mother played with him. Yeah. Because she used uh, to come in the sixties to Prague Spring Festival, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. That that's so you have a very rich history, but of course today probably uh, would not be possible just for homegrown talent like you to live all your life just in your own country. You'd have to go abroad, yeah, maybe for studies, for you know, because it's. It's probably impossible just to be always at home. Don't no, you know? 
uh, also uh, before the revolution, we had uh, the, the classical music was very uh, very uh, supported by uh, by government by by the state. Of course, it was it was a propaganda for socialism that we have uh, world class musicians, dancers, and etc. And we had uh, such an organization uh, in in English would be circles of friends of classical music. Circle, circle, of circles, friends. and it yeah. was the organizers yeah. in yeah. small cities, uh, and we had only in Czech Republic, and also there were another in Slovakia, but only in Czech Republic, we had about 360 organizers of classical music, of chamber music concert, and they organized average. Uh, amount was 10 concerts a year. So if you imagine it was 3,600 concerts of chamber music, only these Czech circles, are there, yeah, in, only in Czech Republic, in Czech Republic, Czech only. in Slovakia, in, in Slovakia were another 150. Yeah, so it was 500, 500 uh, uh, by uh, 10, so 5,000, yeah. but then there, there were orchestras, so you have a lot of orchestras here, who organized concert with the orchestra, but also organized chamber concert. So we had, I don't know, seven, eight thousand concert only in this uh, with Slovakia together, right. country with fourteen million people, uh, organized seven thousand uh, uh, concert of classical music. So we had and we had problems sometimes. It was full, of full, full, yeah. full of full. The people liked it, you know. Uh, so uh, you could really live. That's why we had so many uh, strike string quartets here, uh, uh, because they could live really only from concerts. Uh, concerts uh, they played in in the Czech Czechoslovakia, oh. but now of course uh, exist. Uh, I don't know 50, 50 these circles, but they have no money, you know, and and of course the life was also much cheaper. Uh, because now apartment in Prague costs a fortune, you know, so uh, so it, it it was different, different. Of course, different uh, world, different world. But how do you see, for instance, uh, the performing arts? Mm, you know, the after the pandemic, how do you think we've all been affected? And what are the biggest challenges apart, obviously, from, you know, vaccination and the practical things? But when things hopefully will come back to what they call no, new normal, who knows well, what that is. You know. mean, how, is that, how do you think, what what could we uh, uh, take with us to that we learn something? Maybe, maybe we, had, we had all this time to think, all this time to wait until the concert life begins. Oh, how you think our world will change, in your opinion? You know, I, I, I am a little bit afraid because the politicians are uh, not always uh, music lovers, <laughs> classical music lovers, <laughs> and uh, they will use uh, COVID uh, depths they made for for, so that we could live, we, we can live normally now. We have, shops are full and we are not hungry and eating works everything. Yeah, yeah. And they will use these COVID problems for uh, reducing uh, uh, expenses for for the culture. For the culture. So, yeah. So I am a little bit afraid because uh, the days when uh, the nobility was uh, supporting the. the composers like Beethoven, Mozart, and uh, etc. These great, uh, or or uh, or church, Mozart. church like yeah, yeah, Johann yeah. Sebastian Bach. Uh, yes, yes, so yes, yes. they are not not such a, such a politicians nowadays because they prefer uh, f football and uh, and uh, other sports and, and rock music. So. That what I would be afraid that uh, uh, the music, uh, music, uh, classical music will be probably suffering much more than it was before COVID. Mar but marginalized. Um, yeah, marginalized. yeah, yeah. But what? I don't, I don't want to bring bad news. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who knows? We'll, am, we'll know what. <laughs> I am optimist. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, so, yes, you were always an optimist. You, as long <laughs> as I know you, you, were always an optimist. But I think also maybe we were always in the minority anyway. You know, we could never. You know, before maybe if you look at 19th century, yes. They were rock stars. Paganini was a rock star. Yeah. Uh, Franz Liszt was a rock star. Okay. Even Kubelik. Yeah, huh? Kubelik. Yeah, Kubelik. Even Jan Kubelik was still a rock star. In Chicago, uh, Chicago he played for 150,000 people. There you go. Because there you go. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, Anton, Anton Rubinstein gave oh. 45 concerts. In uh, in 30 days in America, I mean, yeah. unbelievable. Anton, not not Artur. Artur, yeah. of course, we know. Anton Vinyavsky came once, and then yeah. I mean, they they were be before the rock stars be or pop stars became pop stars. Classical music war because when Melba, the famous uh, Nelly Melba, came to Venice, there was a procession of gondolas yeah. meeting her, just like. You know, now, now maybe even Madonna, if she comes there, she doesn't get that kind of greeting. You know, it was really the yeah. highest class. They were the Mark Michael Jackson and, you know, Madonna's of that time. But this time, of course, is different. But numbers is not everything. And money and numbers in our business cannot be measured. You know, how much is Haydn Symphony is worth? Is it five euros that you buy the score, yeah. you know, the world score, or is it five million euros? You can still cannot compose a symphony like that, <laughs> you know? So it's something intangible, something that cannot be valued by numbers. And don't you think that real music lovers who've been starving, like we've been starving, not having concerts, not having live, live audience, one hopes that they were also starving to have performers, to have that incredible chemistry and that, that physicality, like what we talked about earlier in the program, when, when you hear a live orchestra, it's a miraculous feeling, you know, you just, your, your hair stands up, you know, and I want to end our program on that, on the positive note, because For me, our meeting, last meeting in Prague, first of all, Prague for the first time uh, in, two, in September 2020, it looked a little bit like the Prague in 66 because there was no tourists. <laughs> you know, all the years before, there were more and more in Vivaldi, four seasons from every church and everything. It's a little bit of a... <laughs> of a disaster, you know, disaster by, by numbers. This time I could go anywhere, the Staromasta and this and that. I loved it and all the play. Of course it's strange, but it's it reminded me. So maybe, maybe just, you know, thinking of this, you know, 50s plus years uh, bridge, maybe we're going through a period of what they now in computer, what they call reset, <laughs> reset, you know, a new beginning, a new beginning. And maybe some of the things that will disappear, maybe they should disappear. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's exactly. not bad if they, if they disappear. Maybe, and the audience, the true music lovers, the ones that we love, and we are also music lovers when we hear music, uh, maybe we will have our own very special but very loyal and passionate audience because i cannot imagine that it's only us the performers want to perform i think the audience will gradually when they feel comfortable when they're vaccinated they're not afraid to catch covid they will come and experience that that thrill of a live performance what do you think yes and that's why i am optimistic because when you were here Uh, uh, last time it was end of this three months uh, because mm -hmm. shortly afterwards slowly came lockdown again but we had after first wave of COVID we had uh, uh, three months uh, free of yeah. everything concert everything 
And the people only after this five months of or four months of that lockdown, they were so hungry for classical, especially for classical music, that even the organizers who were used to have, I don't know, half hall full, they said, we have all concerts, even unknown musicians, we have all sold out. The people are angry, they are happy that they can, they can come to concert. So that's why I'm optimistic. Maybe the government will give less money all over the world, but we will have more audience and we will have more pleasure to play the music. And of course, we have if if you have your apartment or house, you know, you don't need much money to buy food to, to survive, you know. But the main thing is if you have roof over your head and, and a good family, yeah. you have wonderful family. I have, my wife is wonderful, wonderful lady. We are very happy. We have good relatives here and we are, we are happy. The main thing that we all are healthy and we can continue with our playing you are younger, so I hope uh, a few no, no, years the more. Same age. Yeah. Yeah, they're the same age. Yeah, and absolutely. I hope I hope the people will return, the audience will return, and we will we will celebrate with them every our every concert, and we will every enjoy concert, much yeah. more much more than we enjoyed before. I think exactly. Will. And I'm looking absolutely. forward for for every meeting with you, Dimka, and with oh, our wow. audience and. See you on in Ottoman Prague again. In, in September, I'm looking forward so much. Thank you so much, Vastik. It's been a wonderful, wonderful reunion for us. And mm -hmm. hopefully our, our viewers also enjoy it. And they will find also on this on my YouTube channel, there's a lot of recordings of Julian Sitkavetsky, of course, and yeah. uh, also of my mother, Bella Davidovich, and of Vast. All the recording that we mentioned, the Giants of Ireland, they're also yeah. on that YouTube that we made together. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can watch this program later on, and I will see you in one week. But thank you so much, Russia. It was really very, very special. Thank you for the invitation, and please greetings to your mother, Bella. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for everything, Dimka.